Doesn't it seem like the Satanist witch would just grab that when she's done? Like you think, right? <laughs> okay, you have to put it right under their room, but then go get it. You were able to put it there, so go get it. Eh, I'll just make another totem. It'll be easier that way. Keep it on a string, and you don't even have to crawl <laughs> under there again. <laughs> you hate it when people leave a dirty workspace, don't you? It's just, oh, it's the worst. Who closed? Who's the witch who closed last night? <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking terrible. Is, is this virgin blood? It's all over the workstation. This looks terrible. Now there's fruit flies. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Keith Enright, and I'm joined by the legendary Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Pop scare! Yep, good one. And Pop scare podcast host. <laughs> we also have veteran masochist and protege of Alan Dershowitz, Andrew <laughs> Torres is here. Andrew, welcome back. Yeah, thanks, Heath. That's right. A Alan Dershowitz, uh, seriously, 100% taught me everything I know about criminal law, and I am bringing that majestic <laughs> knowledge to your ear holes here today. <laughs> I don't think Andrew's exaggerated. I think he's, you're, yeah. you really did learn a oh, lot. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's, 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 right? that, uh, that's absolutely now true. Now I want to watch Alan Dershowitz defend a doll. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting close. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, All right. Well, let's get right into it. Andrew, what are we going to be breaking down today? We watched The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. It's the story of a kid who murdered his drunk ass landlord for hitting on his girlfriend. Or is it? No, no, it, it, is. <laughs> it is. It's also it's also about a gazebo, to be fair. Yeah, it no, turns it's out a it's gazebo. About a gazebo. <laughs> Those are nice structures. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you thought the exorcism of Emily Rose was a fair and balanced legal drama, but you're still waiting on that biopic of your hero, financial advisor Bernie Madoff, you <laughs> will love this movie. It sucked so much ass. It's, <laughs> it's really real bad. Does. Look, real bad. A lot of the movies we do are badly made. A lot of the movies we do have bad ideas. It's rare that a movie is so well made by so many grown-ups and still sucks so much ass. <laughs> it's the, it's all lying. The whole thing. It's they do not stop lying for two hours of this movie. It's so rough. So, so rough. All right. Is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, I'm going to take the easy way out here and go uh, best worst stakes. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. I mean, you know, I mean, stakes of the movie. I don't mean, you know, like tasty Meat products. No, but, there's yeah. no tasty steaks. <laughs> so. Yeah. None metaphorically or literally. No. <laughs> I'm going to go with best worst demonstration of having magic powers. Ooh, <laughs> yes. I, w w we're going to get to the details of it, but it's just absolute nonsense. One of the characters yeah. who is a liar is demonstrating to the police that she has magical powers. Oh. And the police come up with. The dumbest demonstration test for her <laughs> they do. Yep. you can think of. Think of something dumb. This is dumber. Yeah. If, if you have just thought of flip a coin, you thought of something <laughs> slightly better than what the cops come up with in this movie. Only slightly, 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 <laughs> like 17 percentage points. Here's how bad uh, this movie is. I thought your best worst was about the Satan witch who will have at various times super speed, indestructibility, the ability to go through walls and ouchie, you hit me with a rock. <laughs> well, yeah, th that's all ridiculous. But the Satan witch actually has those. This this demonstration by the liar is just over the top. The Satan witch is a great reason why you should always have a lawyer look over your contracts, people. <laughs> Say Satan Witch's powers are like Superman three levels of like, wait, they can do that? Yeah, yep. it's totally bonkers. <laughs> yeah, they are a perfect combination of they can do that and they can't do that. <laughs> oh, and see, I, I took the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst protagonists. And yes, Ugh. I am aware that we have had movies where Kevin Sorbo was the protagonist. Look, the heroes of this movie all have real life corollaries and they are, as Andrew mentioned, a guy who murdered his landlord and Ed and Lorraine Warren 
two con men of the highest order. You would be hard pressed to find three people who suck more ass than the good guys in this movie. Yeah. I wouldn't call murder the guy a corollary. That's the main yeah. plot of yeah. the real, real story. Yeah. I, I have an argument to the contrary, but we'll get to it. We will get to it. <laughs> All right, well, I think it's time for a quick break, and then we'll be back to tell you all about The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. And isn't it true that you are not, 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 not the murderer? Not, not, three, four. Yes? Gotcha! Damn, that's good. Yeah! Uh, hey, Heath, hey, hey, Eli, why, why are you guys in my office? Oh, we're practicing for when we're lawyers. Uh, wh- what? Uh, when are you going to be lawyers uh, as soon as there's a master class what's master class come oh, on seriously andrew what you guys made me adjudicate four subsections of this contest. Had a I, whole nother column I spreadsheet. In? this is ridiculous uh, fine with master class you can learn from the world's best minds anytime anywhere and at your own pace you can learn how to meditate from john cabot zinn improve your chess skills with gary kasparov or learn how to cook from gordon ramsay With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, the thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. Including being a lawyer? Well, no. But you can learn anything you want. uh, Otherwise, like buying and selling real estate from Robert Refkin. Or sales and persuasion from Daniel Pink. I actually recently watched that one. And even though I sold stuff for almost a decade, I learned a ton. I thought it was a great class. Wow. I mean, that does sound good, but... uh, do you, do you recommend that I try it out? I highly recommend you try it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as God Awful Movies listeners, you get 15% off an annual membership. Just go to masterclass.com slash awful. That's masterclass.com slash awful for 15% off masterclass. Wow, that sounds great. Now, uh, uh, all right. As long as you're in on this masterclass thing, did you guys try the not not guilty trick yet? Yeah, no, yeah. we just did that one. Oh, that's a good one. Right? Like 90% of lawyering. (laughs) Daffy Duck gets him every time. (laughs) Okay, everyone. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for The Conjuring 3. So, what are we all thinking? Oh, okay. I got a good one. So, what if in the movie, Annabelle... Nope. Dave? Dave? Yep. Yep. Dave? I'm going to stop you right there. We are done with the doll. Uh, but, but people like the doll. Yeah. I know people like the doll, Mitch, but we have used the doll. We have done all possible scary things with the doll. So unless you guys are about to pitch me on Annabelle fucking opening a stand at the farmer's market with her gay lover in Des Moines, we are done with the doll. Okay, farmer's markets aren't actually good for the environment. They're Nobody goes to them because they're good for the environment, Dave. Like, they go so you can give money direct to farmers. Just inefficient. Guys, 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 you cannot have this farmer's market fight at every meeting. All right? Uh, look, okay, we agree the doll is out. I, I, there have to be other spooky events we can talk about, right? Uh, did did we do the, the Amityville house, right? Ed and Lorraine were there. Yeah, but we did that. We did that one. Oh, crap. Uh, okay, like, um, brainstorming. What, what else is uh, scary? Oh, uh, like haunted graveyards. What about that? Murders. Murders are scary. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Murder. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Ed and Lorraine were, were part of a, a murder or something, right? Uh, kinda. Uh, one time a guy who lived near them killed his landlord. And so they spent months making it about them in the press. Uh, well, uh, great. Uh, why, why don't we just pretend that that's something and we can make a movie about it? Yeah. I, that actually sounds pretty good. We could even add a villain instead of just, nope, he murdered a guy. Yeah, murdered murdered a guy, exactly. Uh, yeah. Question? Yes. Are we going to be distributing this movie through theaters and retailers, or did you want to set up like a roadside stand for people to come get it like that? People like you are destroying the heart of this country, Dave. The heart uh, and soul of the country. Okay. You're not even a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. And we're going to start with an evil robot killing somebody in a wood chipper? 
as the opening <laughs> logo thing? Am I, am I wrong? You are not wrong. Can we also mention that the background noise soundtrack that's uh, auto-tuned cicadas playing the tuba? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's that. God. Very true. All right. Uh, you know what? This is a perfect setup to this movie. Now that I think about it, neither of those things are weird, knowing what's yeah. going to happen now. Terrible and makes no sense. Exactly. So <laughs> we're going to start the movie by reminding you that the protagonists of this movie sat there using their pretend magic powers while the priest tortured a mentally ill eight-year-old. So, yeah, that's the first thing we're going to start Yeah, with. Right, there's a title card, and it says, July 18th, 1981, Ed and Lorraine Warren were called to document the exorcism of David Glatzel. So that's what we're watching, this little kid getting exorcised by a priest, and Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are supposed to be the protagonists of this movie, are filming that for their liar documentary, right? That's yeah, the, the child torturers. Yeah, the document is a weird word when you're not, you know, conducting research to be published in a scientific journal. Like when, when you're just a guy, it means doing nothing and yep. filming it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the first thing they do when we actually see them on screen after the title card is take a break from their <laughs> exorcism. Are you allowed to call a timeout with Satan? Is that how it works? <laughs> I love the, They're like, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, we should probably stop for a second. The priest actually says, my powers are too strong. This kid can't take my magic is too much for an extended period of time. So we'll we'll take like a little water break, have some oranges, and then we'll get back to the exorcism. <laughs> and this is like a pregame. They're not even actually doing the full exorcism yet. They're like warming up and doing... I don't know. Exorcist yoga here. <laughs> Everybody knows you have to stretch for 15 minutes before you can do the exorcism. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, mm -hmm. you'll get a cramp. Yeah, okay. It's all about breathing. And I was trying to pay attention to this part of the movie. They're like putting the kid to bed so he can get some rest before they exercise him some more. But I noticed that this kid had a light bright on the a bedside table. <sighs> and I was so distracted. I wanted a light bright so bad. Really? Uh, Eli, I, I have to tell you, light brights are like basically one of only three or four 1980s toys that held up. Like, oh. I would play the fuck out of light bright right now. <laughs> like, Wait, and also, how do you play with it? better special effects. You, you, you put the little push pins in the black board yeah. yeah it's great light bright oh you're light done bright, describe i never so understood i i could sing you the entire light bright song right now <laughs> yeah but i have no desire i never wanted to play one i don't understand it it wasn't oh i, I was a simple kid it's it's not a sport so i mean that's because you probably grew up with a computer but look like <laughs> also that yeah and a penis to masturbate so there was a lot going on <laughs> anyways He's sitting there. I'm admiring the light bright. But Arnie, that's the sister's boyfriend, comes in and comforts him by saying, you know, child who's going through an exorcism, I got bullied as a kid. So I know exactly what it's like to be possessed <laughs> by the devil. Same. Geez. Yep. Uh, and this kid is trying so hard to be cute in this. I mean, <laughs> he all but sings yeah. like, I love not being a demon. I love not being a demon. I'm adorable. So, you know, nothing's going to happen to me in 18 seconds. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, honestly, this little kid is my favorite actor in the movie, favorite character. He's pretty great. Oh, yeah. And he, right here at the end, he's like, hey, Arnie, lock it in. Fucking pop the question to my sister, you fucking coward. Let's go. Let's go. I'm getting exercised over here. I might die because of a demon. Get fucking married, man. <laughs> Gather ye rosebuds while you may. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So now we're going to introduce truly the main character of the movie, Unnecessary pop scare. Yeah. Yep. In this scene, it's going to be a door knocking pop scare. We all have essentially the same note right here, which is this movie invented pop foley. Like, I think it's <laughs> so weird. But it's the priest, and he he's ready to do the exorcism. But before he can, the kid is gonna go into the shower and get Satan or something. Something. This scene was so fucking dark. It was impossible to tell what was happening. <laughs> well, yeah, so the, the kid hears a bunch of banging on his door of his room, and he runs into the bathroom and hides in the shower and pulls the shower curtain, and then there's like a demon puts his fingers over the top and then unsheaths a sword for a second. That the metal on metal scraping of the knife was like so jarring. It was incredibly weird. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> and the, but then that demon doesn't do anything with a sword. That nope. demon just as a prank apparently turns the shower on that had like 
a red blood packet in it. So the yep. kid gets showered with blood as a prank by a demon. Very prank based demon for the first nine <laughs> tenths of this movie. That was weird. But the parents come upstairs, right? And they, they do that thing that everyone does in a horror movie that no one should ever do in real life, which is the kid is like standing in shadow and they can barely see him. And they're like, M- Michael, is, is that you? Michael? Leg like, stab. Well, oh, right. Leg stab. Exactly. <laughs> it's, okay. Way too fast. This little kid, <laughs> I, did, mm, I, I didn't like any of this movie, but I really <laughs> didn't like I was genuinely scared. I have a lot of trouble with this sort of thing. I don't like it. He's too fast. It's, it's uncomfortable. I don't like pop scares either. Very so exciting. I muted 99% of this movie because, fun fact, pop scares don't work if, it, if the movie's muted. Because it's the sound that actually makes you jump. So it's just the kid oh. being like, eh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to start playing like 80s music like the rest of this movie did. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> You'll fucking get it. I learned something here today. <laughs> yeah. But the kid, he gets stabby for a second. They grab him. There's this great moment where Ed has the kid in like a headlock and he's like, father, we need to speed up this exorcism. The kid's getting stabby. Yeah, and the father argues back. The priest is like, I don't know. We were doing the pregame. It's a whole thing. We need. And dad's like, right fucking now? Stab me in the leg just now? You didn't see how fast he was? We're doing the fucking exorcism. Forget the yoga, man. The priest goes, let's drive him to the church. Why would you have come here if a part of it was driving him to the... All right, we do a pickup and delivery service. We're really great. <laughs> and then we have... I'm sorry. I, I had to comment on Ed carrying the like squirming demon child down the stairs where he's reaching out to like rake the walls Mm -hmm. and he is wolverining the shit out of the wall. Well, I mean, it it is he touches the wall and then in post-production, someone adds Wolverine claw marks in MS Paint. (laughs) Right, exactly. uh, It's it's amazing. Starts as Uh, the shape of an eraser and then it kind of (laughs) comes (laughs) down. Use the spray can. (laughs) Is that a dull edged scratch you put in the wall? That's, <laughs> how'd you do that? I, I'm, I'm not even mad. I'm just sense. depressed. <laughs> so they're exercising away, and <gasps> mid exorcism, Lorraine has a psychic vision, which I should point out in real life means that this fucking bitch couldn't make it through a child torturing without making it about her, right? Lorraine <laughs> Warren had to be like, wait, 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 everyone stop torturing the child. I am special. And also, question, as somebody who is new to the Conjuring series of movies, has Lorraine always been cast as Uncanny Valley Sidney Powell, or is that just me? <laughs> Very much. Oh, I haven't seen okay. any of the other ones either, but right. I would imagine yes. Oh, so I have seen all of these, and the weird subplot that the Conjuring movies have accidentally created because... I don't know, someone's granddaughter is allowed to take a last pass at the script is like, Ed's always like, Lorraine, are you using your psychic powers again? And she's like, you know, I gotta. It's a Lucy and Ethel dynamic that really throws (laughs) off the whole series. I gotta tell you. (sighs) And then uh, the demon kicks the shit out of everybody. Oh my God. Okay. This movie is genuinely funny and doesn't realize it, right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. This moment, this was the first of many times. This little kid, he's my favorite. He beats the shit out of a room full of adults <laughs> from on top of this table. He's doing like sweep the leg moves and just yep. kicking people right in the face so hard. And they're just flying everywhere. I couldn't stop laughing at this point. <laughs> it's so good. He also gives Ed Warren a heart attack at this point, which I just want to point out is historically true. Ed Warren did have a heart attack, but. It was because he was a fat piece of shit and it didn't happen during any of their magic adventures. He was just sitting at home and had a heart attack. Yeah, people have heart attacks. That's not generally magic. Yeah, but this is when the the uh, inciting incident of the movie is going to happen. They're all exercising and Arnie is like, don't take him, take me. <laughs> and can I just say, why are people constantly offering themselves during exorcism? Right. Constantly. Like it's not necessary for an exorcism. And yet in every exorcism movie, at one point, someone's like, would you consider moving it to me instead? I don't know. That's like a free hero move in my head. I'm going to do that for sure, because it's nothing's going to happen. But you look like you tried to (laughs) save a little kid from something. Oh, you think he was bluffing and he just he was like, ah, shit, demons are real. And it actually turns out they are real in this universe. Yeah, it's pretty Ah. funny. He's like, hey, buddy, David, little, little kid, just be cool. 
Well, what if you? Uh, what if the demon kills me and's coming to me? I, I'm fucking your sister. Come on, let the demon <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the demon jumps into Arnie very obviously. I really wanted Ed to turn to everyone else in the room and be like, "Okay, so do we just?" Start working on the guy who just got filled with a demon. I feel like we're all here. It'd be weird, but no, no, they're going to wait and see if he's an asymptomatic carrier of the devil. <laughs> uh, and that's the end of that scene. So now they're going to slip us another title card 10 minutes into the movie. Ugh, yeah. Okay. It says the exorcism of eight year old David Glatzel was meant to end the months of torment. But for Arnie Johnson, it was just the beginning. He's the sister's boyfriend. The tragic events that followed made nationwide headlines and led Ed and Lorraine Warren to the most sinister discovery of their career. And um, I'm just curious how many sinister discoveries they have. They, <laughs> they've lied about a few, right? They you don't rank, rank the, the sinister discoveries in your life? Yeah. How yeah. do you even rank? Whatever. It doesn't matter. It also says based on a true story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go fuck yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah, speaking as a lawyer, the word based does a lot of work in that yeah. sentence. <laughs> so now it's barbecue time and love interest. <laughs> Jesus, what was what is this girl's name? Do we ever learn her fucking name in the movie? Uh, not that I know of. Yeah. So girly McGirlface is gabbing with her mom about Arnie wanting to leave their shithole small town. <sighs> yeah. Uh, th nothing important is happening right now except one thing for me. Again, this movie is very funny. So <laughs> I know what you mean. Arnie is about to go inside. He's playing with David. He's playing with a little kid out in the yard, and and he's he's about to go inside get the plate of meat for the barbecue. And as he's walking away, David, this little kid, hits Arnie in the face with the football <laughs> so fucking hard, so hard. Like I know, it's not so like funny. not like you. Oh, it's a Nerf football. I, I dinked it off your head. Nope. He stabs him in the eye with the point of the football <laughs> so hard. Uh, it is truly the first stabbing murder of this movie. <laughs> it's also very clearly not a kid who threw it, right? Like they had some oh, yeah. fucking PA. They were like, yeah, just beat him in the, in the skull bone with a football. But this is the first of the, and this is a thing with bad horror movies, right? If your horror movie is about nothing, you've got to spend a tremendous amount of time with someone being like, that's weird. I guess I'll figure out what that was to slow, creepy music. And in this case, it's going to be a cereal box. <laughs> <laughs> you are not. I, that's not for comedian. It's, it is like the producers watched the first hour of Poltergeist and we're like, yeah, OK, but is there something less interesting than chairs moving? <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Yeah, they settled on a cereal <laughs> box. Cereal. Oh. Yep. So he's staring at a box of cereal. He, we went inside to get the meat. He looks over to the side. He sees a cereal box moving and he's like, yeah, that's kind of weird. I better go solve the issue of the moving cereal box in this <laughs> horror movie. So he walks in the other room, but it turns out it's a pop scare mouse and it's not a demon. Or is it? Yeah. And apparently he's one of those people who, when they see a mouse, just sort of follows it around the house like he's hoping to watch it fuck. Oh, okay, I, I'm sorry. I got, I got to interrupt. I get that both of you guys used to live in New York City, but like that's a fucking rat, guys. Like that, is, that is not a mouse. Okay, it's not. I feel like living in New York City that helps us know whether it's a rat if it can a carry a, a full eight slice pizza down a set of <laughs> right, stairs. Yes. Otherwise, it's a fucking mouse. outside of New York City. That's a rat. Okay, yeah. And then, so even though he just saw the mouse run in there. Apparently the mouse's mouse hole is at eye level. It's fine. Even though he just saw the mouse run in there, he then presses his eyeball up to it like he's hoping for a mouse fucking peep show. Well, yeah, I was like, all right, man, don't, it's, you just saw somehow a rat mouse like fly into the air and go into the <laughs> wall in a hole at your human eye level. Yes. And I was like, okay, probably don't touch the mouse demon hole because it's it, the hole is like clearly possessed and there's like evil tar dripping off of it and he's like yeah I'm going to fondle this I'm going to fondle this with my hand you know what I'm going to put my eye right next to it now <laughs> like his dick was about to go into that hole before 100%. we get this, yeah. this no, pop no scare. question yeah, yeah. That, the eyeball literally breaks the fourth wall in this, yep. in this shot yeah <laughs> Yeah, so then there's another pop scare. It's the spooky kid from before, Ooh. but he imagined it or something. Wait, it was a kid? I 
it's unclear if it's the witch or the kid. I thought it was just some older guy who pop, who's just behind him and then disappears. I think that's the witch. I think that is the actress who's playing the witch. She is showing up in these pop scares early on. Okay, she oh. dresses like a pilgrim. Maybe. She does dress like a pilgrim. Maybe which I didn't makes catch her face enough. Or yeah. yeah, and she's like off to the side. So Let me spoil the movie now for a moment so that we can follow <laughs> along with her insane fucking plan. The bad guy of this movie is a, a Satan witch. You know those Satan witches, how common they are? And the Flash. Right. Okay. She's, <laughs> she's bothering this family. She first, she cursed the kid. Now she's after Arnie. And at this point, this movie wants us to believe that her plan is like, all right, Raddy McRaddykins, you go into the cereal box. And then when he looks after you into your house, that's when I'll sort of stand behind him and be like, sup. But then I'll disappear. That's her plan at this point. She's going to slow roll this plan. Super, <laughs> super, <laughs> like very deliberate, going to build the pranks. It's going to be nice and slow. She does Satan magic like that early phase of texting where you're not sure if someone wants to date or be friends, right? Where you're just like, maybe we could hang out. And they're like, yeah, me and my friends are going out later. And you're like, oh, what does that mean? Satan magic. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at the hospital, Ed and Lorraine are the ones who sold the rights to this book, damn it. So they're going to get some fucking screen time. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the priest checks on Lorraine and she's she's sleeping by Ed's bed. And I just want to say this weird opening monologue he gives her of the like, you're spending too much time to your dying husband's bedside. Weird take. It's a weird take. And also, can someone explain the chronology of this movie to me? Like the picnic I, that very clearly had a like six months later vibe to it. Right. But I, yep. I guess they just. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, exorcism on Wednesday. Picnic on Thursday. Like <laughs> I, it's bonkers. Yep. And then this, I can't believe I have to say this is going to matter. We learn about <laughs> Ed and Lorraine Warren's first date. He worked at a movie theater. She had a vagina. They went to a gazebo. <laughs> okay, but gazebo, they're so romantic. Gazebo, they have a gazebo rain kiss. It, it's this not is a very even touching a good scene. story. It's, uh, you're not a good story. It's like learning about Hitler's first date. <laughs> I enjoyed, okay, now it makes, I feel like I have to withdraw what I was saying, but. Uh, I, but also, again, temporally, right? Like Ed and Lorraine are somewhere in their 40s in 1981. And this flashback is to when they're like, I don't know, 17. And it is set in, I swear to God, 1874. Oh, right? like, absolutely. Like Ed, is, Ed is a fucking carny <laughs> boot black. Mm -hmm. He's got the little like strap on hat. Like, what is this movie? She's <laughs> wearing clothes from the 1950s at one point. It's very confusing. Very, very confusing. We only tell you this because there's going to be an amazing tie at the end. Total <laughs> to that. It all comes back together. Let me tell you. So now it's time to cut back over to Arnie, who I guess from that last scene, we're supposed to see like, oh, the demon's in him now. So now he's cutting branches off the tree with a chainsaw <laughs> ominously. Just using a chainsaw on a rope. While I'm belted to a tree high in the air, I'm not a demon. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. I'm you guys hear that ominous music in the background, right? right. Yeah. Well, he, he hears it and he looks over to the side at the house. And then whatever it was that did the pop scare with behind the mouse hole, that person is staring at him from the window for a second. Just <laughs> slow playing that prank thing. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to stare at him for a second in this moment. <laughs> And then it turns on his chainsaw suddenly. Yeah. Okay. So that was the next step up in the pranks was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn on his chainsaw for like a half a second. He's oh. just going to be like, bah! and drop it. And that's See, it. now if this movie wanted to win me back, we would cut over to the witch's whiteboard where it was like mouse hole arrow <laughs> chainsaw question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that was pop scary and spooky. Okay, I I don't mm, I did get scared by this pop scare though. I got scared by all these. The pop chainsaw scares. got the chainsaw went on, and I was like, "Fuck!" I, this is the third time I had to stop <laughs> this movie and call. So I called my mother at this moment. Like I really <laughs> called mom, and I was like, "I want to talk to you for a little bit. I have all the lights on." That I'm we're watching off a now. scary movie <laughs> for my job. Yeah, I had that exact <laughs> that's real thing that happened to me. Heath's just hanging out on his front porch. What's going on, guys? Hey, hey, taking a little walk. Okay, I'll catch you later. I'll catch you later. <laughs>
<laughs> There's no such thing as demons, right? Oh, you're gone. It's good. You're far away. No, no, you don't have to come back. You guys want to walk with me? I'm new. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we come back over to the hospital again, and, and Ed wakes up to let them know the demon is in Arnie now. Oh, God. Yeah, and this exposition, it, it, like, he's just wheezing out, like, eight lines of dialogue. It's like, no, it, it's it got the other kid, Barty. <laughs> I mean, I just said kid the first time around so that you'd have to ask that follow-up, even though Arnie's, like, 24 and I'm 41 and I'd never love it. Anyway, uh, 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 time to lapse back into the coma. Like, <laughs> Some great acting. Ridiculous. By Ed, yeah. Ugh. Okay, but what's what's happening here? The demon explained what it was doing, but only to Ed at that moment. I, I we all saw the black eyes, right? Yeah, oh. it, it, I think Ed is the only one who saw what we saw, which is Arnie's eyes turn black when he volunteered himself to the demon. Okay, but he was too heart attacked. Everybody else just thought it was one of those ineffective demon volunteerings. Okay, yeah, oh, exactly. yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and then. In what is one of the most bizarre choices in the movies we have ever watched, we cut over to a stereo fixing montage to super upbeat music. <laughs> yep. Oh, Rocky God. music for fixing a stereo and picking up chickens. It's weird. <laughs> it is blondies call me. I li- when when yeah. this scene happened, <laughs> I literally laughed out loud for real for like a good solid third. It was just fantastic me fucking too because it truly this is what happens in the movie it's the kid he's got the kid a call me a baby, baby, baby. <laughs> honestly if the demon had just been partying around inside arnie's skull this is my favorite movie of all time yeah this is bruno's stereo by the way we should meet bruno we met him actually a second ago he is um sweaty drunk guy friend and as soon as we met him, I was like, oh, sweaty drunk guy has 20 minutes max before he dies. He is going to die very soon. Yeah. His stereo is getting fixed by Arnie here while we listen to Call Me by Blondie. Yeah, he stumbles onto screen and is like, why don't we have a drink and we can play hold knives to our throats? I'll go first. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is also, this is just a thing if you're watching along. This is the cheapest pop scare of the movie. Arnie is kind of staring into the middle distance and the girlfriend's like, hey, but she does it super loud, so it's a pop. She's like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and Arnie's like, hey, 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 everybody bring it in. No pop scaring me right now. When you just walk up to me, do it at regular speed from the front. Don't, no pop scares, please. I might be a demon. Yeah. So they, they dance around a little bit. Bruno dances with his girlfriend and Arnie dances with Bruno. Everyone's dancing around having a good time, but then he gets overtaken by a demon and he, there's a stabby stab stab. And can I just point out how absolutely fucking tasteless this is? Like, look, I did a little Wikipedia and tried to read up about this murder case. From what I can tell, like, the landlord hit on the girlfriend, so Arnold Arnie murdered him, and that's gross. But, like, that's a real guy who died. It's weird to turn that into a spooky scene for your movie. Yeah. Right? It, it would be like if you made a horror movie where the guy who killed Harvey Milk gets overtaken by a demonic Twinkie. Like, no, this <laughs> is a real murder. It is not a good subject for your weird demon special effects. But anyways, we cut to after the stabbing. For some reason, this movie's very shy about the actual stabbing. So we watch Arnie like wandering along the road and a cop just sort of pulls up and is like, hey, man, you, you full of demons? You got, you got <laughs> demon eyes? You have demon eyes there? And he's like, what? No, no. Re- regular eyes. I, j- eyes. I just have eyes. Look at, look at, they're normal. I, I, I guess it falls to me to point out that uh, in Bridgefield, Connecticut, or wherever this is shot in 1981, we're supposed to believe that uh, this is a black cop driving the patrol car all by himself. Yeah, that was the least <laughs> realistic part in this movie about demons. Yeah. So he's like, hey, man, your eyes demony. And then he turns around and he's all covered in blood. And he has that great like, oh, I, I think I might have stabbed a pie. <laughs> 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 it seems like the demon inside would just keep the human's eyes normal for now while he's trying right, to like get right. away. No, uh, 
Or is the demon like trying to get caught, like trying to set up a test case like right. about demon? Well, we're going to find out that there's going to be a test case about demons. It doesn't go as well as I would like, honestly. Yeah. So later that night, the cops are on the scene solving the very obvious murder. But don't worry. The movie is sure there's another hour and 25 minutes of this movie oh left. <laughs> and we get exposition radio playing already calling it a murder, right? Like not guy stabbed police are investigating possible murder. Nope. They definitely know. Wasn't, <laughs> wasn't self-defense. Wasn't any other kind of thing. Like uh, that, that seems like irresponsible newscasting <laughs> to me. Yeah. They got one of the future telling things from minority report doing their news telling <laughs> at this point. Yeah. I, I'm going to allow that to characterize as the witness as a carjacker. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we cut over to the prison where they are having Arnie read the Bible because if you can read the Bible, you don't have a demon in your butt. I, I, I love that everyone in this interrogation room agrees that demons always play by the rule. Right? Like, this is like he's point for right? Like demons hate it when you read from Second Chronicles. Like, isn't, <laughs> isn't there the demon Heath somewhere who's like, hey, I could just not make his eyeballs go all black when we're murdering. <laughs> and, and, and when they start reading from Deuteronomy, I'll just tune it out like a normal person and <laughs> instead of frothing at the mouth. Hey, this is great. Southeast. <laughs> <laughs> Very effective demon. Just saying it's an excellent tactic. <laughs> but yeah, that means that the demon is gone. And there's this fucking fantastic moment where Arnie's like, okay, but if the demon isn't in me anymore, what do you guys do? And everyone in the movie is like, good question, because we, we don't even do stuff when the demon's in there. So, yeah, this is a mystery now? I guess it's a mystery now. Don't worry, the movie will forget about this plot. <laughs> yeah, the too, movie so. will forget about this plot very, very quickly. So now we cut over to, I think all of our favorite scenes <laughs> and and one of the great reasons why we had Mr. Torres on today the scene with the lawyer explaining how guilty he is, <laughs> this, is <the> best. <laughs> this lawyer just is so angry about having to do this meeting in the first place and the lawyer's just like you're all stupid i'm a lawyer we're going we're n a demon possession defense is what you would like to do you want me <laughs> to do that that my job as a lawyer will be demon possession not guilty that's what you're saying <laughs> Yeah, I, I have never been more empathetic for any character on screen than this <laughs> lawyer in this movie. Because look, like, I'm not going to lie. I, I've had conversations with clients that have been the equivalent of I'm not going before the jury. And, and again, this, this lawyer says, grand jury which takes me out for a second but whatever <laughs> what, it, this the script was written by an idiot i'll, I'll uh, whatever it was just the the royal grand it was a jury <sighs> yeah. that happened to be grand in the general sense uh but look like i'm not going before the jury and arguing he was possessed by demons good sentence to say lawyer except that sentence number two the next words out of her mouth were because that's never been done before look like the problem is not lack of testability here on this <laughs> like ah. Uh, God. Show me the story decisis of this thing, and then maybe we'll... <laughs> that's less nonsense than what this movie would have. Yep. Right, okay, but Ed and Lorraine are like, yes, we want you to do that as an attorney. You know what? Come over for dinner, and we'll show you what we're talking about. <laughs> and I was like, show this attorney what? What the fuck are you going to show her? What does that even mean? Okay. <laughs> So for, for clarity, the claim that this movie is making, Ed and Lorraine Warren literally turned to their house into a look at our spooky shit museum. Yeah. Okay. So the claim that this movie is making is that when they were about to have the lawyer make this claim, they were like, no, 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 no. Come see our Raggedy Ann doll, which is what Annabelle is based on, and our a collection of broken plates from the Amityville house, which we charge people $25 to look at. And you'll definitely want to lose your fucking license as a lawyer. Can we go to this house and take a tour, Eli Bosnick? We can't, unfortunately. What? They um, they are dead, and there's no. Can we go to the house there. anyway? I mean, you can't stop us from going to your house. If Andrew's taught us anything, <laughs> uh, we can go to any house we want until people say to leave. Don't take legal advice from god awful movies, okay? Live show at the Warren's house. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, uh, I like it. 
All right, so she's like, whatever, do your worst. And then we cut over to court because they <laughs> sure did convince her with their haunted doll. They doodly do over the convincing. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, exactly. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck would that be? What would that look like? And the movie was like, I don't fucking know. Next scene. <laughs> I don't and they know. Skip it entirely. It's always best if that's in your imagination yeah. as to what was so persuasive. Right. <laughs> so now we're in court and <laughs> this guy, his attorney agreed to this. They plead demon that happens <laughs> and the the judge is my favorite fucking part the judge <laughs> hears this happen he's like how do you plead demon not guilty and judge is like oh you're serious there's such a long pause while he's just like what the fuck are you talking uh, what is happening in my life and then he's like oh that's really what you're saying you're disbarred you, the attorney, you're clearly disbarred. <laughs> the judge so. makes a face that I have seen people make several times in my life where they go Oh, this is a whole thing now. That's what the judge <laughs> says with his eyes. This is a whole thing now. And he's he is mouthing the words to the lawyer of like, you can just plead not guilty, you know, like, <laughs> save the demon stuff for later. Yeah, but they cut to outside and dang it, because they pled not guilty, the prosecutor is going to ask for the death penalty. Uh, uh. Uh, and so I'm sorry I'm fixated on the stupid law in the stupid demon movie but like the real Arnie Johnson was tried for first degree manslaughter because you know that's what it was I mean yep. do these people think you get the death penalty because you committed a crime and your lawyer is stupid wait 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 don't answer that. I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> all right withdrawn especially with Sidney Powell from <laughs> yeah no, withdrawn <laughs> okay yeah. so they head back home to listen to some so for some reason, Ed and Lorraine decide that it's on them to clear Arnie's name and prove that demons exist. Right. By the way, they would never be allowed to testify at this trial. They yeah, they just duh. talked to a bunch of newspapers and were like, oh, trust us. If we were in that courtroom, Arnie would totally get off. And wh whatever poor soul that was the judge of that actual courtroom was like, no, absolutely not. You can't, <laughs> you can't bring paranormal witnesses. But that's not what happens in the movie. So they head back home to listen to some recordings of themselves making shit up. Okay, yeah, so they're they're going back to their reels of tape from when they taped exorcisms. What do they think they're going to find? Like, the demons said something on the tape that they missed? Like, <laughs> demons narrate and there's some detail that they're going to catch now? <laughs> yeah, and if you don't Mirandize the demon, like, that shit's not yeah, admissible. Yeah, it's important. So. <laughs> yeah, there's a body camera footage gets out the mayor of Chicago. All right, look, we got a lot of good demons on the force and I don't want this to get crazy. <laughs> and look, I am going to take us to bummer town momentarily because one, this is the scene that everyone talks about in the movie. And it's like the, the true story of the true story thing, which is that the family later said that something traumatic happened to David. That's the little kid who was possessed on the waterbed. They didn't say what would happen and it wasn't, what happens in this scene, which is like an old lady pops out of the waterbed and grabs the kid and sprays him with water. But like what I'm pointing out is that the chance that this kid is possessed is zero because God's not real and nothing happens when you die. The chance that this kid was sexually abused and that caused a psychotic break for him is not zero. And that is a real bummer Rooney to put in your horror movie. Uh, I think a professional demonologist begs to differ with you, Eli. It was obviously demon waterbed. Okay, could have been a demon waterbed. There you go. There you go. Waterbeds are a fucking nightmare. I don't understand. Are the, really? are, is that enjoyable oh, for people? No. Oh, no. Yeah, disagree. I, yeah. As Andrew can verify, lying on a waterbed only leads to one thing, Heath. Sweet, sweet lovemaking. And then seasickness. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm definitely not reading my note about how when I was eight, I wanted a waterbed now. <laughs> <laughs> now we know why. So yeah, back in the present, we, so that we watched the kid get attacked by a demon in the waterbed. Back in the present, girlfriend's like, that's stupid. Why would being on a waterbed end in possession? And don't worry, they have an even dumber answer, which is that underneath the waterbed, underneath the floorboards, there's something spooky. No, there's water damage because the waterbed popped. That's what there is. Yeah. But right. the movie is like, that's not, that's not water damage. 
I think it might be demon damage. Ed and Lorraine are in this room and like Ed might as well wipe his finger along this and taste it and be like, that's demon damage. <laughs> that tastes like demon damage and cocaine. 100% pure demon damage. So they head underneath the house, right, to see this. And I just want to point out that the finding the witch symbol thing in houses is a absolutely stereotypical con that psychics do, right? It is second only to wait. cracking an egg filled with hair. <laughs> I, wait, okay, so what, what's the what's the finding the witch symbol con? So what, She's what planting you do, evidence. She's planting a thing, right? Yeah. You you go to someone's house, you go, I don't know, it sounds fucking haunted, and they go, uh, I don't believe you, but I will the moment you do or say anything. So you find some water damage, and then you go, oh, Better crawl under your house, the spookiest part of your house. And then <laughs> while you're in there, you pull out a little stick man that you made with your shitty husband at home. And you go, oh, this is a witch symbol. But luckily for 10 low payments of ninety nine ninety nine, we can break your curse. That's so obviously what happened with Ed and Lorraine Warren. But this movie has to make it a horror movie and pretend it's real. So we're going to watch her crawl around they might as well have a scene in the movie where they decide to play a little game of cards with two black aces and a queen <laughs> I, I i appreciate the explanation and it it does make this scene seem a lot like hey i, I found a bible written on gold plates so <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly that's pretty much what happens yeah lorraine crawls under clearly plants this like demon witch totem thing and is like oh look what i found is a demon witch totem it's right under where the kid's waterbed was in that room where the demon thing popped out. So I have a question about what they're saying in this movie. They seem to be saying that the totem, the demon thing, the witch totem has to be directly under the spot where the demon eventually shows up. Like deep, Demons can only go up, like straight up. Up is straight the only up. direction. <laughs> has of to demons. be under a bit, which means again, there's an unshown scene where which the lady is walking around the house, going, "Okay, I'm at 45 degrees west." And, <laughs> okay, so the wall is here, like a fucking water guy trying to find where your pipes and studs are. He's like, "Okay, cool. I've got to get under." She puts it in the wrong place, and his foot gets infected. Fuck! All right, I'll come back later. In the demon week. pops shit. up in a toilet full of shit. Oh, Okay, who? come on. This is the, the one spot, really, really. <laughs> the one other thing I have to point out is that as she's crawling through the crawl space, the witch totem, before she discovers it, it's like covered in a little bit of cloth and they have these very obviously domesticated rats. They, they're yeah. all they have these beautiful shiny coats and morbid obesity and they're like kind of near it and they're like, oh, that's pretty spooky, huh? <laughs> I 100% thought that the scene was going to be the little domesticated rats praying to the skull altar, which totem. It, like, like it, it looks like it. Oh, I'm not kidding. No. Oh, such a better movie. Okay, so liars. They're liars yep. and they planted that. Okay, <laughs> we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with more The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. 57, 58, 59. Rob a graveyard. Oh, God. Yeah. We were so close. We hey. were. We were. I felt Guys, it. what you doing there? Oh, uh, Andrew is teaching me not to commit crimes. Yeah, that, huh. that's right. If if you like could make it 60 seconds without committing an audio felony, I'll take him out to dinner. <laughs> Which is good because I am starving. Well, Eli, if you're looking for excellent eats at an affordable price, why don't you just try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Mm, I don't know, Andrew. I have special food needs. Dark special food needs. Yeah, we, we know. Uh, it, look, HelloFresh offers 27 plus recipes to choose from each week, from vegetarian meals and calorie smart choices to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. Mm, I don't know. Heath and I spent a lot of money on that billboard you wouldn't let us put up. Yeah, because it was a war crime. That was actually never settled by the UN. Yeah, that you, wasn't because I stopped you. Uh, but, but Eli, 
HelloFresh is 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal without sacrificing the quality. Yeah, I was actually a HelloFresh customer way before they were a sponsor. I love the variety and they make cooking for myself at home a breeze. Okay, guys, I am in. How do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful12 and use the code Awful12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful12 and use code Awful12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping? That's exactly what I just said. Yep. All right. Sorry, Andrew. Looks like I won't be needing that dinner after all. Uh, it, please... Please beep that. Yeah, 100% beeping that. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Torres, come on in. Hi, hi, Ed. Hi, hi, Lorraine. How's it going? Thank you for agreeing to this. I think that after you see what we've got to show you, you'll see things our way. Right. Look, look, I understand that you want me to go into a court of law and say that my client was possessed by a demon when he stabbed a guy. I got to tell you, even if ghosts are real, that's a bad defense, okay? There's nothing you're going to show me here that's going to make this... Perhaps this. A Raggedy Ann doll? Uh, Not just any doll, Mr. Torres. This is Annabelle, the haunted doll. That's the silliest thing I've ever seen. You're silly. Yes, it is. It is. They had to change it to a different looking doll for the movie. But perhaps this will change your mind. A broken plate? From the Amityville horror thing is the last remaining evidence. Yeah. Wasn't that whole thing a a very obvious real estate scam that uh, your partner confessed to being a scam super publicly? Ah. I don't remember that. No. Woo. It's not what you said. Yeah, woo. S- seriously? My God, Mr. Torres, it's a real spirit. I, I, that is very clearly your wife wearing a sheet with the eyes cut out a no. la Charlie. Very, very real Christmas. spirit. I'm you can a hear ghost. it. You hear please, that? please, please stop. Do the legal thing we want you to do. Careful, Mr. Torres. You better give it what it wants. Or you could be haunted forever. Take this seriously. Uh, uh, Okay, I, I, I'm I'm gonna go. Don't forget to visit the gift shop on the way out. Your your home has a gift shop. Of course it does. Yes. To the left. <laughs> and we're back. And now Ed and Lorraine are explaining the magic behind the witch totem that Lorraine very obviously planted under the house to make their stupid documentary more exciting. Oh yeah. Someone explains that this is used by Satanists in their rituals and. No. Also, for the record, witches don't generally have totems. I mean, look, 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 some do because Wicca is 99% white girls with undercuts appropriating other cultures. And one of the cultures that they like to appropriate is First Nation peoples who do use totems, but they use them in religious practice and not for magic spells in any sense that we would understand that sense of the word. So my point is, is that this whole movie centers around a witch's totem, which is like calling something a Muslim communion wafer. It's just not a thing. <laughs> right. I, I I was also not clear on the relationship between witches and demons. This seemed like kind of a strange, you know. Yeah. They're no, not the they, same thing. Yeah, they're yeah. not the same thing. No. <laughs> right. They interchangeably use demon and witch and Satan worshiper here. It is really very different things. It, it's like being like, oh, man, tell me about it. There's axe murderers. There's serial rapists. There's yoga instructors. I mean, it's really <laughs> dangerous out there. Right. So they're saying, though, that this witch totem got placed under the house by a Satanist witch to curse this kid. Yeah. David was cursed. Mm-hmm. So that means the exorcism part, it just like makes the demon pick another chair. So like you exercise and the demon's like, I go in this guy now. All right. I'm going to come inside the guy. Oh no. That guy got yelled at by the the guy who's going to marry the sister. All right. I'm in him now. Like the I'm demons in just, now. they move around. Nothing really gets accomplished. Well, and as we'll learn later in the movie, and it's worth spoiling now, as we'll learn later in the movie, this demon has a three variant requirement, the <laughs> child, the lover and the man of God. Like, not only will this movie directly fail to explain why the fuck anyone would want to do this later. I mean, they will ask and the movie will be like, conjuring three. Nothing with a three at the end is good. Right. 
So that means the exorcism helped, actually. The demon was like, oh, no, this is perfect. I have to do a three thing. And now was great. I was stuck oh. in this fucking kid. Okay. No, that makes it a lot easier. Thank you. Waiting for a lover to come along. <laughs> this has really worked out. <laughs> right. But this is where Ed and Lorraine, they, okay. Ed and Lorraine have a helper guy who, <laughs> just, like, from Rolling Stone magazine, he's like a journalist and he's just a helper. He just, he's an aide. They have a, witch hunting aid their intern he's doing coffee runs yeah right they have an, <laughs> they have an intern and they're like hey intern here's what you do send out these pictures that we made of the totem to everyone who knows the glatzel family and see if we can you know find something out that way so like what what would that letter even say? <laughs> like the le- they're going to write letters to everybody that knows the Glatzels. It's like, dear sir or madam, uh, do you do you know anyone who carries around evil totems and you've just been ignoring it completely? Maybe you could help us with something. <laughs> We'd like you to start caring. <laughs> and and it's 1981, so the letter is going to have to right. It's not like you can laser print the photo and send it out. Right? <laughs> it's going to describe. Okay, so it kind of looks like a squirrel skull, but picture it facing upwards, and there's these little <laughs> spikes on it. And oh my ah, God. the dot matrix is stuck. We have to. Uh, it's jammed. <laughs> I got the uh, no. You're not lining it up right. You, you can see you're not lining up the spikes. Oh <laughs> God damn it! This is also where. Ed is pretty sure that this is the Disciples of the Ram cult. And he goes, you remember that, don't you? And I was like, no, because you made them up for this fucking movie, dude. (laughs) I'm thinking, hey, man, Temple of Doom will not come out for another three years. So, you know. (laughs) But luckily, they remember that there was a priest who totally knew all about that very real cult. And he retired, but they could go ask him about it. And when they say he retired, I wrote in my notes, if they do not find him chopping woods in a cabin in the forest, I'm going to be so fucking mad. So close. Good news. Yeah. He is feeding his chickens in a life of retirement. (laughs) Oh, and he looks like he has been decomposing for about 125 years. It does. Oh, so yeah. Ed and Lorraine drive out to this guy's house and they're like, hello. We're random people who drove to your house and want to ask you questions. And he's like, I have chicken shit on my hands. <laughs> yeah, good. Best of the movie. So you won't shake hands with them. Great response to meeting Ed and Lorraine oh, Warren. Let me I'm, tell u- you. I'm using that from now on for everything. Just, yeah. hello, I have chicken shit on my hands. <laughs> Heath, why haven't you texted me back? Chicken shit hands. <laughs> okay, but this did bring up a very spiritual question for me. Do you think con men, when they meet like this, right? Because the priest is the priest that this is based on is obviously a con man who talked about Satan shit. Ed and Lorraine Warren con people. Do you think when con men meet up, they get to be like, hey, dude, we're working on this publicity shit. You want to help us out with this? Or does everyone have to pretend the whole time in case someone's a cop? <laughs> oh, they have to pretend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this priest, this is a guy who helped fuel the satanic panic, according to their own story. That That's who they're referencing here. One of those guys. Yeah. yeah. It's a dirty, rotten scoundrel situation. <laughs> I, I, get, I get it. Like, so he's like, yes, I have heard of your satanists. And this is where they ask why the fuck anyone would do this. And the answer is, actually, (laughs) Satanists love chaos. His nectar is despair. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) This this whole scene is great, though. First, first, this guy, chicken shit hands guy, is like, forget you ever saw this. They show him the picture of the totem. He's like, forget you ever saw this. And I was like, all right. If they're just like, sounds good, credits. I would have been so yeah. happy. <laughs> if they, all right. All right. You know, yeah, let's end the movie. Best gam episode ever. So good. <laughs> but no, he looks at it and he's like, oh, well, this is very sophisticated. I, a sophisticated <laughs> squirrel skull thingy. I, Get the fuck out of here. So weird. Yeah. I love the idea of a really sloppy, low-level witch. Yeah, right. <laughs> like an unsophisticated totem. Yeah, just the me of witches, just like can't get the squirrel head to fit on the jawbone. <laughs> the demon kind of half enters the kid and then exits again. Huh? Was that Come on. Is that good? It's a cabbage patch doll. Keith, will you, you come do my just... side work on my totems for me? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Measure the totem twice. Cut the, cut the totem once. <laughs> right. So he says it's very sophisticated and they're like, oh, okay, okay. So why would someone attack a little kid? <laughs> and old man priest is like, well, the why 
is irrelevant. And you, and you watch Ed and Lorraine be like, no, no, that's our entire question. It's the whole we question. Just, we need to know why. And then Lorraine is like, okay, what if I rephrase without the word why? And she says it slightly differently without the word why. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah come on in. I'll, t- I'll tell you all about this. <laughs> I, well, I have a creepy unlit basement that will answer all your why questions. God, yeah. <laughs> so they're walking down to the terrifying basement. Lorraine's like, I don't want to go in your terrifying <laughs> basement. <laughs> and it's like, we're going in the basement. Come on, we need this for our weird fucking house. You want to end the museum. movie like I suggested a minute ago? No, exactly. <laughs> no. We're going in the basement. <laughs> they get down there and Ed is like, hey, cool. Yeah, this is a very evil basement. You should stop having a basement <laughs> of evil. You should destroy it. Well, we should clarify in this farmer ex priest basement, he has a collection of hundreds of satanic items. Yeah, right, little brass statuettes and totems and evil books. He's there's a, there's a little the mini Baphomet over on the wall. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. <laughs> Is that a bobblehead of Baphomet? <laughs> yeah, and like he said, Ed's like, hey man, maybe you should destroy all these evil magic props. And he says, no, I collect them. It's like taking guns off the streets. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can just destroy the guns or in this example, your evil stuff, just destroy it. That would be better. And he's like, no, I like having it for nothing. No reason. I like having it's it for me. It's my <laughs> hobby. And then, then he tells them about the cult of the Ram and they were, they were evil and they did terrible things, including again, real quote from the movie blasphemy which gave them power <laughs> and i wrote in my notes oh yeah how many patrons did that blasphemy yeah. get them <laughs> i am the i am the third highest blasphemer on patreon <laughs> <laughs> okay and apparently those powers that they got included the power to make a kid born with his heart outside his body okay Wait, what what this- this needs to be explained the way I experienced it. He's like, yes, the blasphemers gave them great power. The day their cult leader was arrested, his son was born with his heart outside of his body. The next day, his wife cut her own head off with a train. And then Lorraine are like, shitty powers, bro. Those seem like bad <laughs> yeah. things. It's a really specific power that's not going to be useful very often. Making a child born with it. When when would you use that again? Why would you need to have a child with an external heart? He's also the leader of the... He did that to himself? Or they did it to him for getting caught? Who the fuck knows? But meanwhile, somewhere spooky, a Satan witch is lighting candles spookily. <laughs> with like... A giant collection of matches that the witch had to keep in a little thing. It just, <laughs> it seems like you'd get a lighter at a certain point. You're probably doing this spell a lot. You're doing a lot of light. Just get a lighter and like, yeah, light a but if thing. you get one of the stick ones, it wrecks the mood, right? You just like click, click, click. And you're just like speeding through the candles. That's no fun. Get an ornate Zippo with like a skull on it. I don't know. <laughs> Because nah, then you gotta tilt it down. It's a whole thing. Or you gotta put the candle you on watch top. watch this witch refilling the Zippo with the little <laughs> Zippo refill thing. <laughs> Going uh, to the gas station, picking one out. Do you have Zippo refills? Uh, Why does this one say get her done? What am I, who am I getting done? <laughs> I, is it, am I the her in this case? <laughs> But, but this is her casting a spell. So we cut over to Arnie. Remember Arnie? He's who the movie's about, apparently. He's mopping. Yeah. Uh, apparently, when you get accused of murder, they immediately put you on mop duty in a room full of sleeping other prisoners. Yeah. So he's he's mopping. And then, <laughs> obviously, this is another one of those times where they're trying to do pop scares. So Arnie looks over to the side, and he starts staring. I don't even know what he was staring at, but I was like, hey, man. Don't stare at random objects. That goes badly yeah. for you every time. Don't do that. Just ignore it. This is the thing. You can get ahead of most horror movies. If you walk into your kid's bedroom and he's standing in the corner, you're just like, hey, what's going on, champ? Booba dooba dooba. Yep. Then, then you, you beat the demon at their own game. <laughs> Don't stare at the bucket. But there's a bucket snatch pop scare here. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah. We also we get to see the prison guard lady in like the next room. Oh, like, she's looks, so oh, good. She is my other favorite character know, besides I David. Know. She's fucking fantastic. She's just in the other room being like, <laughs> he's, this guy's staring at a bucket. That's gonna, he's going to get pop scared by that. What a fucking idiot. Classic. This woman can be in every horror movie ever. Just in the other room, casually reading her magazine as demons rise and pull forth from the ether. I wanted her to have like strings and she's like moving the bucket away from fucking <laughs> <laughs> Some guy who's hiding underneath gives her twenty bucks. I can't believe he fell for that. They, I'm telling you, they always stare at the bucket. <laughs> but, but alongside prison guard lady, don't give a shit is the fantastic random sallow skinned person now solemnly intoning the Blondie lyrics. Yep. It's, it is. I defy anyone to watch this scene and not giggle hysterically. Like mm-hmm. it is just okay. Uh, even Arnie can't stop giggling. Almost. No. He's like, Hey, what are you, you, you reciting the lyrics to Blondie? Call me as a pop scare man. <laughs> You pop scare. He <sighs> starts to explain it. He almost explains it. He's yeah. like, "Call me any time." It was the song you stabbed the guy to. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> I should have picked something different. Oh, Can I start over? Oh my god! Oh god! If they had picked "It's Raining Men" here, could you imagine <laughs> how much you get this guy going? Humidity is rising. <laughs> the barometer is getting low. Oh my god! It would be so great. <laughs> But yeah, that that apparently spooks out Arnie. And then the <laughs> Satanist, we get this cut of the Satan witch walking away from her cup like, good job. I did good. <laughs> good day of witching. And we use so little of call me that uh, we don't even have to pay royalties to be <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Doubly evil. <gasps> right. So meanwhile, back at Ed and Lorraine's place, they're staring at the witch totem in the hopes that it will look less silly. And it won't, by the way. <laughs> nope. it, looks, nope. it looks like someone's first attempt to build a bear. But this is where their intern comes back in and lets them know that there's the cops in Danvers, Massachusetts. Remember how they sent out all the photos to everyone in the world ever? (laughs) A cop in Danvers, Massachusetts has seen a totem just like this where a girl was stabbed 22 times, which is the same as Bruce, who also got stabbed 22 times. Yep. So they go up to Danvers, Massachusetts to talk to this cop. And the cop explains that he's got a case where this might be involved. And he explains that same as theirs, there's a, you know, a witch totem that they found at the girl's house who had been stabbed. Now, doesn't it seem like the Satanist witch would just grab that when she's done? Like, you think, (laughs) right? Okay, you have to put it right under their room, but then go get it. You were able to put it there. So go get it. (laughs) I'll just make another totem. It'll be easier that way. Keep it on a string and you don't even have to crawl (laughs) under there again. You hate it when people leave a dirty workspace, don't you? It's just, oh, it's the worst. Who closed? Who's the witch who closed last night? (laughs) (laughs) This is fucking terrible. Is is this virgin blood? It's all over the workstation. This looks terrible. Now there's fruit flies. (laughs) Didn't do any of your baby (laughs) roll-ups. So... They go to the cop and they're like, maybe we can help each other. And the cop's like, no, you guys are frauds. And no, they're like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a police officer. You help me with my thing. No. <laughs> and Lorraine says, okay, if you help us, we'll help you find the missing girl, the one who did the 22 stabbing. I feel like you didn't hear me. I'm a police officer. No, you have to just help me with my thing. I thought that was well, clear. And this is this movie's idea of fair and balanced, right? Like they're they're introducing the cop as the skeptic and the skeptic position is, well, you know, obviously Satanists are real and they're everywhere and they conduct secret rituals and they're scary and evil and they must be stopped at all. Cop- they're not magic, you rubes. Fair <laughs> and balanced. Yeah. But also is the implication of this scene that if the cop said, no, I won't let you see the file. Lorraine wouldn't find the missing girl. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Quid, quid pro quo. <laughs> yeah. No deal. No psychic powers. <laughs> and now it is time. Now it is time for the test of Lorraine's <laughs> psychic ability. The cop comes over and he says, one of these knives was used in the murder. The other two I just grabbed from the evidence Three locker. knives. He has <laughs> three. <laughs> she has a one in three chance of being magical now. That's what's been <sighs> set up by this detective, this police detective. My friends, 
I spent so much time learning to palm cards, and switch <laughs> cards, and turn over cards, and switch them and swap them. <laughs> this fucking guy is like, all right, fine. Flip this coin. If it turns out heads ever, you're a psychic. All right, tell you what. I'm thinking of a tenor, and you prove your magic by naming a tenor. Pavarotti. Oh. Damn it. Okay. That's oh. impressive. That's impressive. I can't name the other two either. It's like the man with the blind guy. It's Enrico Palazzo. <laughs> yeah. The blind guy. You were thinking second one was blind guy. Yeah, but I was thinking blind guy. Andrea Bocelli. No, no. Now, okay. That's four now. I get, but come on. <laughs> Don't be a dick. They drive a little bit and as a further proof of her power, she goes, you missed a turn. The body's back there. And I just wrote my notes. Okay. Nobody likes a backseat driver when you're looking for a corpse. Okay, Lorraine. <laughs> I was just really hoping that she would get the knife wrong and they just leave and then cross. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> no, nope. oh, you're not magic and you can't be involved in this case. You're dumb. <laughs> Go away. I will note that this is the fourth time that Heath has suggested this movie would be greatly improved by just ending early. And I agree. <laughs> so many spots. Agreed. hundred times. <laughs> Very much agree. God. I love so good. Yeah, they're driving now to go out in the woods to check out the murder scene <laughs> that the cop had. <laughs> The cop in the car, he's like, okay, you know what? Fuck. I should have had you guess the knife more times in a row. I should have done it. Yeah. It should have been <laughs> at least like several tests of <sighs> one in three chance. <laughs> Fuck. I could have. Basically, you picked out the Folgers coffee, and I feel like that was really easy. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. I kind of like this scene, right? Because Lorraine is saying deliberately insane shit, right? Like Elvis is playing on the radio, and he's like, oh, did you meet Elvis? And she's like, Yes, but both before and after he was dead. And it's okay. like, I, I, right. And that's his attitude. And it's like, great. I'm, I'm in a car with crazy people. And I, I'm saying the cop could guest on God awful movies as well. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. It could have ended the movie right here too. It could have been like, <laughs> I met Elvis and dead Elvis. Cops just like, all right, get out of the car. We're done. <laughs> get out. If end he pulls of movie. over and yeah, forces he just pulls over, the, yeah. the movie's over. Oh God. That would be the best. <laughs> So back with Ed and Lorraine, they get to the forest and Ugh. she's using her magic bracelet to find the dead kid. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, she's swinging it like a dowsing pendulum so that, you know, <laughs> yeah. lends a lot of support to Eli's thesis. <laughs> <laughs> she has this amazing moment where she goes, something terrible happened here. And the detective's like, yeah, we just said we found a body here. Murder. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There was a murder. You want to guess one in three? I'm thinking of a number. I'm thinking <laughs> of a number. Between one and five. All right. This is the real test. Let's get serious. <laughs> yeah. So Lorraine is like, all right, I'm going to step into Dark World for a second and do my thing. See if, I don't know, they left a business card in Dark World. Maybe I'll find it. <laughs> and she goes into Dark World. She has a little doodly do. And apparently she can see into the past, right? Because yep. she sees the girl who gets murdered have, hanging out with her friend in the woods. Yeah. Why would she just now be using yeah. seeing into the past for the first time? I that, I feel like that would be a very useful thing in, you know, helping to solve crimes. But yeah, yeah. go home and use that on your thing in Connecticut. You're, you yeah. have a superpower. You know, that thing that you've been trying to figure out where it's from. The use past. Your superpowers on yeah. it. Most things happened in the past. And if you're thinking like, oh, Eli, it doesn't work like that. No, later in the movie, it will work exactly yes. like that. Thank you. <laughs> just use your power. Force push. Do it right away. Basic stuff. Oh, but yeah, she witnesses the murder in her dark world underneath thing. <laughs> and and she she like gets lost in the character like fucking Daniel Day-Lewis and almost throws herself off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. She starts miming like the stabbing over and over. And finally, Ed goes over and he's like, honey, 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 stop. Can you stop it? You're a little too much. You look ridiculous outside of dark world where we are. <laughs> Kind of yes. embarrassing me in front of the detective. <laughs> yeah, you can almost hear him miming under his breath, like, look, we're moving from the, the fishes on the hook territory to you look like a goddamn crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So she she runs away. He tries to stop her. She runs away and she almost falls off a cliff <laughs> and stops just barely. <laughs> but then a demon grabs her leg and pulls her even further. And she gets almost all of the way over the ledge, but she gets caught and saved by Ed here. 
I, I, I love this so much. Like, again, we, we cannot overemphasize how unimpressive these demons are, right? Like, so we have a thing that can almost drag 140 pounds of Sydney Powell off a cliff, but not, not if there's a middle aged guy who's just had a heart attack there to pull you back up. Right? No. Like, how yeah. do you get that job? <laughs> So there was a demon just hanging out off the side of that ledge in case a magical Christian lady showed up and ran to that spot. Yeah, but make sure that this is a svelte one, like 120 pounds tops. That's all I can pull off the cliff. I start to fall off the cliff. The demon's just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I don't want to say why. I'm going to get canceled. Oh, he fell by himself. Okay. That was a freebie. So he drags her back up onto the thing. And the cop guy, God, I love cop guy. He just wanders over and he's like, okay, well... That was a fun little play you guys did. <laughs> not good. Not helpful. <laughs> and they're like, check the water. She's down there. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, they agree to go check the water. And back at the ambulance, I guess someone called an ambulance. Ed is getting a blood thinner. So no Viagra that night for him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Ed has a heart problem. And the EMT is like, hey, man, were you sprinting through the woods with your serious heart condition and then dragging somebody <laughs> off the side of a ledge and he's like yeah yeah it was. And she's like okay don't do that now <laughs> no I'm cool and then detective walks over and he's like oh my god turns out you were right we found a body down there in the water and uh that means you're both cops now and you get to see all our case files stuff. <laughs> yep Ah, classic X Files skepticism here, right? Like <laughs> I, the cops, like yeah, you know. So the the one in three thing, I was still sort of on the fence, but now you said a body might have been thrown into water when a murder was committed near a cliff. Okay, I'm I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, he also to try and double down on this, he goes, you know, we looked twice and didn't find anything in that water. And <laughs> I wrote in my notes, oh. Maybe try harder. Maybe really yeah. give it your all when you're looking for dead bodies and bodies of water. <laughs> now that a psychic lady. So Arnie's sitting in his prison cell, right? We cut over to Arnie sitting in his prison cell. And the preacher who talked to Ed and Lorraine earlier, he sneaks him holy water in a glass bottle. Yeah. <laughs> he might as well give him a Swiss army knife for the tweezers, folks. <laughs> right. I wanted it to be a hollowed out Bible and he opens it up and it's just a smaller Bible inside. <laughs> He's like, oh, mm-hmm. Okay, you can just give me either one of these by themselves. That's fine. So while that's happening, Ed is like, hey, Lorraine, you know how you have superpowers where if you touch a thing or you're near a thing, you can doodly do into the dark world and then find out what's going on? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, you want to touch a dead girl? Oh, Maybe yeah. Maybe you can doodly do. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, let's let's uh, let's go touch a dead girl. So that's what they do. They head over to the funeral home to see if they can touch the dead body. Yeah. So they get to the funeral home, which is closed because it's a fucking funeral home. And Ed breaks in <laughs> and they just start sneaking around looking for a dead body to touch and can i just say i kind of want funeral homes to have a night guy right i just want grandma to be slightly better guarded so that the warrens can't come in and touch him (laughs) they need ben dover from fletch too yeah exactly but they do eventually find the body this is by the way where i muted the movie so this movie's pop scares had no power over me for the rest (laughs) of the uh film little pro tip there for you there And so Lorraine finds the drowned girl and she squeezes her and it's a really long time before she has a psychic vision. So Ed has this great moment where he's like, did you see anything or are you just just squeezing a dead girl? (laughs) But yes, she does eventually have a vision of the witch thing and we can see into the satanic cave section of the mortuary. (laughs) She walks through and she, she, this is her like going into the dark world and seeing the witch's coven. And they did that thing where Satanists have the upside down cross. And I just love the image of a Satanist witch nailing a cross upside down inside their coven and being like, ah, that's the opposite of how you were. Got him. Totally got him. <laughs> yeah. And is this where the Satanist witch and Lorraine meet each other in doodly doo land? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. So that's how it works. Lorraine's in Dark World Doodly Doo Land because she's touching the corpse of the girl in Massachusetts. But that same Doodly Doo Dark World Land is connected. It's the same one. Everybody uses it. It's just there's one world 
for that. So yep. the Satanist witch, who's connected to Arnie and messing with Arnie, bumps into her awkwardly in Doodly Doo World. Is like, oh, hey, are you trying to foil me magically? Oh, and, and again, Lorraine doesn't know that she can see her. So there's this amazingly funny like, oh, um, hey, lovely coven you've got here. <laughs> Is that Pier 1, the table full of bones? <laughs> <laughs> but she lets go. She, she like releases herself from the dark world, but not before the witch can send a dead body. <laughs> okay, this is the best. So she, yeah, Lorraine's still in the, the doodly do. And Ed is like, hey, Lorraine. Lorraine, uh, we got a demon here, like a real one in my life in the regular world. <laughs> Lorraine, Lorraine, wet demon. There's a wet, there's a very wet demon. Focus up. It's right next to me. Also, we should point out that this demon is um, portly. He's a portly it's, fellow. It's a large it demon. Is, it is meatloaf. It is yeah, meatloaf it from meatloaf. Fight Club. <laughs> it looks it exactly is. like it's meatloaf. So good. Meatloaf and naked. <laughs> yeah. Also naked. Naked yeah. and soaking wet with sweat. Yeah. <laughs> and look, I think I can speak from personal experience here. Fat guy with his balls out. Not scary. Funny. <laughs> Definitely funny. Yeah. Not scary. This movie is very fun. This is a hilarious movie. Yeah. Yep. He has to, at one point, the demon starts to like run at Lorraine, but she's still in the dark world. So Ed is like, oh, I gotta side tackle this big fat fucking son. <laughs> but he doesn't do it. He tra he thinks about it. He's like, all right, I gotta save Lorraine. But meatloaf demon sweaty just start starts to run over and falls trips and falls <laughs> smashes his face against the metal table he it was so funny i could not well, stop exactly. why did this movie not think that was a comedy beat it's a it's a pratfall a demon has a pratfall here a demon does a pratfall and bang poing poings his head against the side of a thing and we're supposed to be like who what terror has been invoked in me just does like a five minute chevy chase improv falling over inside it's ridiculous he might as well fart when he goes down just like <laughs> Demon. That was a demon <laughs> fart. <laughs> what <Well, City> Eli? <laughs> so now we're back at Ed and Lorraine's place and they are spooked. Dang it. Spooked. But they realize that they can defeat the witch by destroying her altar because they, they found a book that says that, I guess. Yep. <laughs> Just like, hey, look, this book says we can win the movie by destroying the altar. Great. And then... The girlfriend, Arnie's girlfriend, is like, hold on, but didn't you, like, stop the witch in the last scene? Maybe she'll just get discouraged and stop. <laughs> and I, was, I was so happy to, like, be reminded of that idea. Like, what would that look like? A witch giving up. A witch just being like, ah. Oh, Angrily right. stuffing a cup full of blood back into a cardboard box. <laughs> and she's back at us. No appreciation. Just updating her resume on her computer. <laughs> But they explain that she can't stop now. Her soul depends on it. So is blood a skill? Can you write, <laughs> is blood stuff? Can I write that at the bottom? I'm putting up. You know what? I'm going to have every one of my friends endorse me on LinkedIn for witch stuff. <laughs> but yeah, apparently Lorraine in her vision, they were like, Lorraine, do you know where the witch is? And she was like, it was cold and there's water damage and there was a train. And they were like, great, that's no help. <laughs> but don't worry. It will be. Because apparently the... <laughs> The witch right. is going to come to them because for no reason and in a way that will never be acknowledged, Ed is just going to pass out right now. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, now that we're done with a scene called How to Win Act Three, I guess it's time for one more <laughs> quick break. And then we'll be back for the remaining amount of The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. Okay. So on the count of three, you torch me. Okay, and all one, two, three, go, or one, two, three. I'm not torch. having this fight again. It's obvious okay. which one it is. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. I'm still in my office, I see. And, oh, you have a, a blowtorch now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry about that. We were just taking care of our teeth with a mouthwash. And, and, and you need a blowtorch for that? Well, no. I mean, yes. Yes, we do. You know how mouthwash burns super bad? So bad. Well, I just have bad. Eli singe me a little. Well, I swish, and now I hardly even notice the burning. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, putting aside that there are several solutions you should have thought of before that, uh, why don't you just try Quip? The electric toothbrush people? 
Yeah, that's right. Well, look, they've launched a new mouthwash to help you complete your clean. Plus, it comes with a refillable dispenser that's delightful to use and sleek enough to fit on any bathroom counter. See? Ooh, it looks like a spaceship. Looks like it's from a bathroom where every towel is the good towel. It, it sure does. Yeah, Quip mouthwash kills bad breath germs, helps prevent cavities, and leaves you feeling fresh thanks to a formula that gives your mouth everything it needs and nothing it doesn't. Their 4X concentrate has fluoride, xylitol, and CPC, but they left out the artificial colors and stinging alcohol you'll find in a lot of other rinses. But, Andrew, it's so sleek. How do they get all the mouthwash in there? I see that's the thing. Quip's refillable mouthwash is good for your mouth and the planet. With a 4X concentrated formula, Quip ships less water and more good-for-you ingredients. Each eco-friendly refill replaces a big, bulky 470-milliliter bottle from one of those other brands, once diluted. And Quip's refill bottles are made from 100% recyclable plastic. Okay, but I bet I have to travel to the dangerous country of Quipvania to get those refills, right? Nope. Add a mouthwash refill plan and make sure your rinse never runs out. With a customizable subscription, you can get refills automatically delivered straight to your door every three months. You can stay on top of your swish without lugging any bottles home from the store. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful five right now, you can get $5 off a mouthwash starter kit. That's $5 off a mouthwash starter kit, which includes the refillable dispenser and a 90 dose supply of Quip's 4X concentrated formula at getquip.com dot com slash awful five that's spelled g-e-t-q-u-i-p dot com slash awful five quip the good habits company all right i guess we don't need the blowtorch yeah and with the extra time i can tell you guys one of my magic convention stories uh dude uh, sure, I, I guess you please you could don't do, do that. Do that. No, so don't, there I am, doing a card trick for Mr. Boing Boing Boopsy himself. Uh, Keith, Keith, you might want to hold on to that blowtorch. Yep, yep, holding it. <laughs> okay, everyone, welcome to our very real satanic cult meeting that happened at literally any time in history and was not just Christians freaking out about rock and roll. Hail, hail Satan. Satan. Yes, hail <laughs> Satan. So, as you know, we are a group of uh, disaffected drifters or teenagers or rock musicians. Anyways, with nobody else finding out about it, we've managed to harness the dark forces of Satan, the Prince of Darkness. We sure have. Oh, I have so much Satan magic. <laughs> yes, you do. We all do. So, right, we're going to use that Satan magic, that well of untapped eternal power and proof of the divine, not for wealth or power or fame. Yeah, no. <laughs> of course not. Why, why would, would we do that? that stuff? No, we're, we're going to use it to pester Hicks. But uh, only when the much more plausible explanation is mental illness. Mental illness, exactly. <laughs> yes. Of course, that is the best use of Perfect. magic powers. Right, and I, I think we can all agree that doing that is worth the certain knowledge that we possess that will burn in hell forever for doing it. Such a good <laughs> prank. <laughs> <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally worth it. All right, well, so then let's break into groups. Uh, group A, you're going to be putting obvious allusions to our activities in company logos. And group B, you're going to just be putting our symbols all over the area where we do our magic so that, you know, people can find us and identify us for, you know, ABC 60 Minutes bullshit. Yeah, no, that yeah. sounds great. That's perfect. We we're, should uh, we're, definitely leave a lot of clues. We're, we're, we're Satanists and we're very, very real. So real, we're vi we exist. <laughs> I'm pinching myself. <laughs> and we're back. And now Ed is waking up from his spell of p plot device-itis and <laughs> finding an empty house with signs of a break-in. Yeah, Ed's dad sense won't let him stay asleep in a house where someone just leaves the door open. Are we air conditioning the neighborhood here? Come on. It's hot outside too. If the witch if the witch was fucking with the thermostat as part of the pranks here. <laughs> and thematically sound, right? It's, it's her MO so far. And the door is burst open. Now I just want to say that if the witch lady had been like buff as shit and kicked open the door, <laughs> that's a twist I would have deeply appreciated about this film. Well, the witch has super speed, we're going to learn. So like smash through the like shoulder smash through the door, maybe. Yeah, like Sonic the Hedgehog. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. But actually, he checks in the room 
And it's meatloaf. Meatloaf, again. Steven. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted Meatloaf to be like, I'm serving you for that slip and fall in the morgue. Yeah. <laughs> I know I felt kind of funny. I'm kind of angry about that. I just wanted to make up for that. I'm going to attack you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a trick. It's a trick by the witch to get him to stab Lorraine, which doesn't work because it's not that part of the movie yet. <laughs> okay, th- these people need to put away all the knives that they have out. <laughs> yep. Like if you're in plots, like don't have them out. Just put them in like a locker or something. Go hang out in a ball pit. That watch that witch is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, I don't understand. How did the witch manage to put the stabby curse on me? And their <laughs> assistant is like, yeah, the totem must be hidden somewhere. And then the camera pans over to the most haunted and dead flowers. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. The assistant. And by the way, we have at three different points in the script, all three of us have the like, wait, who the fuck is this guy again? Like, like <laughs> the assistant just kind of like disappears for half an hour at a stretch <laughs> no and sense. then shows back up to like, well, you know, my Aramaic is kind of rusty, but whatever. And, and here he's needed in this stretch to have brought in a vase Full of black flowers. I mean, g- like hot topic goth black flowers <laughs> that like, you know, it was like, well, you know, somebody sent these over when you were in the hospital and you're like, dude, you, you, you work for two trained demonologists and <laughs> you thought the black vase with the black roses was the one to bring There's into the green house. smoke coming off of them. <laughs> you brought that in. There's literal green <laughs> smoke. At his performance review, they're like, okay, so first of all, coffee runs were always enthusiastic and great. Yeah. Second of all, you did bring a witch totem into the <laughs> office. <Yeah>. So. <laughs> yeah, but that's what we find out here. The witch totem is inside the vase. Uh, so just to be clear, Ed was lowering himself onto the vase. Right. That's canon, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> that's- he must have hovered over the vase at some point. Demons go up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the next morning, the Scooby gang are all trying to figure out who the witch demon lady is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And they have a chalkboard here. Oh, my like God. Like, they're figuring something out. Oh, it's, it's fucking amazing. Oh, okay. Beautiful. It's just pictures of the, like, four people in the plot with arrows going <laughs> from one to the other. Like, here's someone. The demon went from here to here. And then... <laughs> They have it like a pyramid scheme or like yeah. a like a Rico chart. And at the very top, there's no picture. It just says, which? <laughs> Question, Question mark. <laughs> oh, my God. This scene absolutely needs a montage, right? But sadly, they already blew their montage music budget on Blondie's Call Me. So, you know, <laughs> I, you could have you gotten Jimmy Jameson to work cheap. I've, I have heard that. <laughs> I have a good authority, but nope. Yeah. They're very clearly like, all right, well, we got to. Read through all our paperwork, probably as a montage. Fuck, we already <laughs> no, uh, can't do that. Blondie. Oh. One line that's said in this scene that I loved so much is Satanist power is strongest at night. <laughs> Which night? It's not always night on the planet or even at the same time. <laughs> No idea. Just go to Australia and you fuck up the witch's whole day night schedule. That, that, that was like on a. Uh... <laughs> There was, a, there was an episode of Philosophers in Space and we were talking about like bad 50s sci-fi and one of them has the line like, I forgot it was springtime back on Earth. What? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the name of this movie now is Find the Witch yeah. Satanist, <laughs> which, by the way, it's not going to be revealed that it's a character we've met, yeah. which would make sense, right? If if it turns out it's Arnie's girlfriend or even the little boy's mom, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. That's connected to the plot. She is truly madly deeply just some lady. Yeah. Who decided to curse just some kid. Yeah. Some kid, be right, dead. because yep. chaos is her nectar. <laughs> so back at the house, Ed and... Who the fuck are you, guy? <laughs> are looking through the file. And my friends, this is one of the most masterfully bad scenes in the movie. Yeah. Because what they're going for is they triangulate where the killer is based on where his kills are. But they're too stupid to write that scene. So they're like, all right, one guy killed in Allentown, New York. Then 14 people killed in this teeny tiny circle, which is very obviously this town. And Ed checks the file and he goes, wait a second. 
She brought it home from college. <laughs> Move the pin over. <laughs> this is the dialogue here is truly like 1960s Adam West Batman levels of logical leaps, right? It's like, it's like, hmm, <laughs> demon that rhymes with Lehman. That's how I pronounce lemon. Lemons are sour. Okay. Sour things make you pucker your lips, which um... is the way we used to do it in Connecticut. Yeah, I, I don't think. Wait, you said Lehman Brothers. Yeah. Lehman Brothers <laughs> is an investment bank. Bear Stearns. Bear. It's a bear. Yeah, they have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. So while they're doing that, Lorraine is visiting Father Kastner. Now, Father Kastner, he's the creepy priest who was kind of decomposing that we met earlier, who has the room full of evil stuff. So she, she checks in to see if he has any more things that are relevant to the plot. And um, he, <laughs> he does. does. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Ex Machina, can we... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is where he reveals that the curse needs three victims to be complete. The child, the lover... And a man of God, but they already didn't succeed with the child. The child right, lived, right. so it's it's over. Also, Ed is a man of God now. He's a fucking psychic investigator. <laughs> Short of no illusions, that's about as far from man <laughs> of God as you can get. Yep. But since she asked the right questions, he would like to invite her <laughs> back to the basement. back into the basement <laughs> for even more story. And that that's when he runs away super okay. fast yes so so lorraine is like father father you walked really fast to get ahead of me you're already in the evil basement i don't uh, okay okay based on the staging of the next couple scenes the father is like i have something to show you fucking sprints <laughs> right. down the stairs sits at his desk in his little lair full of evil black magic shit and then turns out all the lights so that when she comes downstairs, he could turn on the lights and be like, hello. <sighs> hello. Well, I, was, I, was, I was been here the whole time. <laughs> my chair's <clears throat> my chair's not spinning. My, it was, oh, it's not a spinner. I thought I could do that, too. He's, he's screeching it along the floor. <clears throat> <laughs> hey, you want to just stand up and spin around? Maybe you just st stand up and do a little spin? No? No, he's got a photo album to show her, though. And that photo album is, this is my daughter. I have a photo of her. Okay, go on. <laughs> I raised her in my basement full of Satan magic. Sure, that checks. In retrospect, not a great idea. <laughs> yeah, he says my wife died at childbirth, so I had to keep it a secret. So I have now a secret basement child that I haven't told you about yet. Why would you have to keep that a secret? I don't understand any of the logic of that. But why wouldn't he have revealed this before? Yeah. His daughter is the Satan witch. Right, right. And the logic is only like, well, you know, it's the third act. You've met all the other characters. We're not, we're not introducing a new character. Are you kidding me? So <laughs> by <laughs> process of elimination, this kind of had to come from you, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he like half apologizes because yeah. he's like, yeah, so, you know, I do have this evil basement of Satan <laughs> magic stuff. And, you you know, you get obsessed with something. It kind of your kid ends up doing it. And, uh, ah. So, ha, all right, uh, bottom line, my kid is the witch who is evil and causing all of this. Yeah, and it's not like, by the way, I know her weakness. I no. know where she is. I know how to help you. He's just like, yeah. hey, this is obviously my kid's work. I don't want to be that guy, but I actually <laughs> I have one of her totems up on the fridge. And I was like, that is my kid. Yeah. So that is my kid. Also, best worst accidental metaphor here. The religion problem is just like the gun problem. Like they did this earlier <laughs> when he was like, I like to, you know take the guns off the streets, but then have them here. So like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, his evil religion does that too. Yes. Yeah. Only if his daughter had shot herself in the face with a witch totem <laughs> would, would the metaphor be more appropriate. <laughs> uh, okay. So meanwhile, over at the jail, the prison preacher is doing his best magic to keep Arnie from killing himself or, or Ed. <laughs> it's unclear. <laughs> But he does have one piece of useful information to her, which is that um, he does have underground Satan tunnels oh, yeah, he knows about yeah, nearby. Not the, <laughs> the nonchalance with which she's like, oh, yeah, there are tunnels under the evil. It, we're, wait, just to be clear, we're, we're in a basement, right? We went down the stairs. It's badly lit. You're saying there's a basement under that basement. Got it. Yeah, he explains and then like runs right through it into his <laughs> next thing. And she's like, oh, hold on. 
Did you say you have a dedicated system of evil totem tunnels yeah. under this right yeah. now? <laughs> yes, he does. But I also want to show you my board game collection. I don't know <laughs> if you've ever played Azul. It's a lot of fun. People, it's really those pieces look beautiful. Oh, no, you want to talk about the, the murder tunnels. Okay. Yeah. So she she runs away. But now the witch is here. His daughter, as it turns out, is mm -hmm. in the basement or maybe the tunnel system. I, They're connected. I it guess. is not clear at all. <laughs> right. So she's somewhere in there and then she actually shows up in his little office area. <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, wait, let me switch off my lamp and turn it back on. Fuck. Ah, that's twice. I tried to do a dramatic spin. I'm not doing <laughs> it. Really not being impactful with my hellos today. There's a line he says to her before she super speeds behind him and slits his throat. <laughs> that is the movie I want to watch where he says, and here I thought you were just here to see me. Which implies that there is an unshot scene where which Satan daughter shows up and like, hey, dad, I was <laughs> just in town, wanted to see you. Check out the underground Satan tunnels. Really? You want to go to Old Buffet? I, I, I do, but that's, I feel like you hate me, right? From the, cause the evil basement. Oh, I mean, uh, Satan because of the Satan magic. I mean, you know, can you ever really hate anyone? Hey, by the way, if anyone asks mm -hmm. if there's a Satan witch around, just don't mention it. Okay, me, okay? Yeah, yeah. there it is. I feel like you're setting something up here. <laughs> so she super speed kills her dad. Yeah, I mean, we cannot pause too lightly over the, the I mean, the flash power. She like yep. runs behind him, quick slits, slices his throat again. This power is like the Superman three logo wrapping you up thing. Like mm -hmm. it would be super useful. Never shows up again ever. Right. Like, nope. remember her main antagonist at this point is Sidney Powell kind of yep. walking right. through dark mm -hmm. tunnels. Like if, if you're the fucking flash, I feel pretty confident that you could take out Sidney Powell. Like that's not going to be a problem. You'd think. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of Sidney Powell walking <laughs> through dark tunnels, <laughs> this is my favorite part. Oh, yeah. Sidney Ooh. Powell is searching around trying to, I don't know, do detective work on these evil tunnels. And she comes across the big room of the altar that's been doing this spell the whole time. She's been seeing the visions of this when she goes into doodly do world. Uh -huh. So she's like, oh, this is it. And it's this really big table with all the stuff on it with the matches and the incense and the, the big goblet of evil, whatever. <laughs> so... She remembers from before, okay, we just have to destroy this altar to win Act 3. That was in that book written in Aramaic. So she tries to, <laughs> to flip this table over <laughs> like a board game, but, but it's, it's enormous. Heavy. It's way too heavy. And she's just like, I can't, mm, I can't flip it. Words cannot express, dear podcast listener, how long our protagonist is foiled by <laughs> a heavy desk. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So much screen time. More screen time is spent on this heavy desk than is spent on why the witch <laughs> might want to curse random neighborhood farmers. <laughs> but just break the stuff on top. Break this uh, magic goblet and stuff and uh, the, the magic items. What, is there a rule that you have to flip the table? There is no. She doesn't like try fucking up the stuff on the desk first. Oh, no. Too. Oh, no. <laughs> it's flip or GTFO. <laughs> and can we point out that while she is like, yeah, yeah. You know, struggling so against long. us for like eight minutes. The witch <laughs> is like, hey, remember in that last scene where I broke the speed of sound? To, now, great time to walk dramatically. Like, oh, can you <laughs> can you hear my high heels? They're making the clip clop noise like I'm closing in. <laughs> How are you doing that? It's a dirt hallway. I feel like she got pulled into Satan's office yeah. <laughs> and he was like, hey, uh, were you using super speed? Because we're trying to go for like a creepy demonic thing. Uh, so if you, I'm just going to need you to go extra slow for the rest of the night. Uh, I, I was trying to build a moment. Is it not? <laughs> okay. That this was like a fast zombies versus slow zombies kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So Ed now pulls up outside. <laughs> Why? Go <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> I have to... Every scene, every item that flows from the next for the next five minutes is legitimately hilarious from this point out, right? Like, <laughs> beginning really with... Really funny movie. This is a very funny movie. Yep, it's a good comedy. Beginning with, there's a back door into the secret Satan tubes. Like, there's, I, there's a delivery entrance. <laughs> like, seriously, he pulls up and he's like, steps out of the car and he's like, oh, there's a delivery entrance right here. This is perfect. So I'll just sm smash the lock on this and I'll be into the evil tunnel network. 
great. I really wanted to watch the scene from the city where the witch is like, seriously, I have to put a second exit in. And the city's like, yeah, lady, if you want permit for your murder tunnels, you need two <laughs> exits. All right. One that is fire safe. <laughs> She's like, ah, fire, so much paperwork. I just want to kill some local farmers. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, not Jesus, Satan. God. <laughs> Damn it. I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now, the witch who has had super strength to burst open doors, the ability to raise the dead, super speed, and a knife is going to wrestle with Sidney Powell a little bit, which is my favorite moment in the movie, because this is where Sidney Powell slash Lorraine hits her in the head with the rock. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They're doing the saving Private Ryan, I'm slowly lowering a knife onto you thing. And then she just hits her in the head with a rock. It's a it's a de eyeballing, right? Like she's mm-hmm. she's wiggling the knife around in like a circular motion, and it's like I'm I'm about to cut that eyeball out. <laughs> yeah, and sure enough, picks up a rock and like George Foreman at forty eight fighting Evander Holyfield, like clumps it into the side of the head of the witch. It's <laughs> it is I I cannot tell you how hysterical it is. It's it's the second funniest thing in these three minutes. <laughs> and look. She does the villain thing where she touches her temple and she's like, huh, blood, because that's what villains have to do. Just once, I want a horror movie for the villain to be like, ow, fuck, oh, ow, Man. right in my head. Ow, oh, it's right in my head. I got my eye with that. What are you doing? <laughs> but now, my friends, it is time to win Heath and Wright's <laughs> love and affection for all time and all this eternity. This is uh, the greatest. So Ed has broken into the tunnels. Sidney Powell just smashed the witch. <laughs> Ed shows up and he's like, oh, hey, uh, Lorraine. Cool. Great. Turns out Lorraine is the witch, actually, right? The witch has somehow disguised herself. Yeah. And then. <laughs> and then. <laughs> so it's the witch. <laughs> the witch goes, oh, hey, Ed, how you doing? Pocket sand. <laughs> pocket <laughs> fucking <laughs> sand, my friends. Literally pocket sand. <laughs> <laughs> a witch. So that witch at the beginning of this day was like, all right, I've got all my hexes. I've got a knife. I've got this. I've got, you know what? I'm going to fill up one of these pockets with sand. Just in case. <laughs> or also this, she's doing her Satan training, right? Beelzebub rise from a pile of black goo made of baby bug. And he's like, okay, today we're learning pocket sand. <laughs> this is great for pretty much all hand-to-hand combat situations you might get into it. Uh, Sounds weird. We're doing pocket sand and wrist control today. That's just, that's just good stuff to have. I was going to say, she might as well do wrist control or step on his insole. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so, 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 so I think Ed turns into a demon now. I, I have no idea. Oh, maybe the pocket sand was... Also demon based. Yes. Somehow it is magic sand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Ed's a demon now and he <laughs> still has his giant <laughs> the sledgehammer that he broke in with mm-hmm. and he just starts swinging wildly at everything in his area with a giant hammer, but he's yep. blinded by pocket it's, sand. So it's, it's, just, it's breaking so everything. Great. It is fantastic. Now, first, I wish they would have used some of that montage money for Peter Gabriel's sledgehammer right here. Like, that would have just been perfect with the theme of the movie. Second, like, I don't know if you guys have ever swung a sledgehammer before, but like, me too. Like, and it's, and it's fun. And like, you can put a hole in stuff, but like, he swings it and like everything it touches, right? (laughs) Crumbles and explodes. Yeah. (laughs) It's so great. Uh, It is a rocket launcher (laughs) slash sledgehammer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So he is, just to be clear, attacking Lorraine with this sledgehammer. And I don't know what saint, what (laughs) angel, made them choreograph this scene for 27 minutes, but it is some of the funniest footage <laughs> ever. It's so long. I could it's not crazy. stop laughing. It's He's crazy. swinging wildly with it. Like imagine Eli Bosnick has a giant hammer. He's somehow on fire and just became a demon. And now we get yep. to watch whatever physically happens for like a half an hour. Oh, so- the actress runs out of ways to say Ed. Yeah. Right. She's like, Ed, no smash. Ed, no smash. All right, seriously, Ed, smash. (laughs) Edward? I don't know. But luckily, she knows the cure for demon pocket sand, which is... Remember our first date in that gazebo? (laughs) (laughs) Can we doodly-doo back to like an hour in this movie? Yeah. But that's that's it. She's like, remember the gazebo? And he's like, 
I do remember the gazebo. We totally did heavy petting. And then he wakes up from his witch curse. And luckily, again, very luckily, they happened. Their little like hammer fight has taken them exactly to the witch's table that she couldn't push over earlier. So now Ed sledgehammers the table and the curse is broken. That's it. (laughs) It is. The only thing I have to point out about this scene that I love is they break it and then the witch shows up and they're like, oh, right. Fuck. Witch with superpower is still here. (laughs) But because they need the movie to end, apparently the demon is like done with her. So the demon comes and like takes her to the principal's office of hell. Yeah. She does the like contorting her body like the bonitis guy from Futurama like this, and this is <laughs> and mind you it is replete with the same like kind of like crunching potato chip sound effects we, we've we seen we haven't talked about it but like three or four of the characters have done this but it's not just like the exorcist it's not the head spinning around it is you watch like the fingers like bend back into curly cues it if you've seen that episode of Futurama like you you will laugh your ass <laughs> off here <laughs> Yeah, the witch walks up to them and they're like, ha your curse is broken. We smashed your table. And she's like, yeah, well, I mean, I'm still going to kill you. I have like this knife and I have literally super speed. I'm going to kill you. (laughs) And then it was just out of nowhere, the movie realizing, oh, yeah, that's right. So so we have to have all our bones start breaking now. (laughs) Yeah. And then that different. Yeah. Was it like a higher ranking witch boss? Just teleports <laughs> over yeah. to the regional right. Satan. Yeah. Like some sort of corporate structure of witches. And this witch has to be like, yeah, you're decommissioned. You have no bones. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We literally get a Satanist ex machina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> oh, so they, they crawl out of the evil tunnels of the witch. And this is such a nothing scene. I just loved it so much. He's like, oh, I forgot my heart pills. And she's like, I keep one inside my locket. <laughs> Except this was never established no. as stakes. He's not even having a heart attack. It's just like an extra thing they added into the movie. I wanted it to be the wrong pill, though. Like, that's really <laughs> for like, decades she's kept that one pill. I wanted to be like, fuck, wait, that was Molly from the other night. Fuck. <laughs> okay. You know what? Whatever. Fun night at the hospital. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Spit half out. I want half. <laughs> yeah. Ch- ch- cheater. All right. So now we watch Arnie get convicted of murder because that's what he did right 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 so this is actually happening we're actually watching this court case and (laughs) it's so good the uh you know everybody please rise we have a a verdict from the jury and i want him to be like okay yeah uh i did definitely murder somebody but i just want to point out that Van Morrison, Brand New Day is playing so you know (laughs) you guys all hear that right yeah not guilty right (laughs) Obviously, Ben Morrison. But yeah, this is where the title card lets us know he's guilty and he got sentenced to 20 years. No, he got, he's, well, oh, he said he got sentenced, but only served five. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, The title card says that, that he, he spent five years in prison, but he was sentenced to 20. He was let out by those, you know, soft on crime liberals. uh. (laughs) (laughs) But he was charged with manslaughter. Is that correct? I mean, it just, it feels like murder was what he did based on what I saw and I think the actual history of this. Yeah, so I was confused by this and I did some hunting around on Wikipedia. Wikipedia seems to think there was more fighting going on Mm -hmm. than just like stabby, stab, stabbing. So maybe that's why he got a reduced sentence. Or maybe the judge believed in demons. I don't know. Maybe he went (laughs) over to dinner with Ed and Lorraine. I thought what they were kind of saying in the movie was like, okay, well, it's not murder if a demon makes you do it is the title of our movie. (laughs) It's manslaughter. (laughs) The you will only serve two decades for this slightly lesser felony makes a a weirder subtitle. But (laughs) look, look, first degree manslaughter is still pretty serious shit. Right. Like it's, it's okay. uh, yeah. yeah. So and Eli is exactly right that, you know, the the reason that that's the charge that you would go for as the prosecutor is that the defense testimony is going to be like we were fighting then like wrestling around and like there was not I did not have the specific intent to stab this guy. Right. 
so. I did have the specific intent to do him grievous bodily harm, but that was offset by the fact that, you know, he's punching me and stuff, so. Also demon, so minus <laughs> also, 15. Also demon. Sorry, I made the mistake of saying what a sane person would say. Right. <laughs> right. But again, you got to remember that Arnie never went with the demon defense. That's just, Ed and Lorraine just stood outside of the courthouse being like, you should totally use our demon defense. And the movie's been like, I mean, he meant it in his heart. He wanted to use the demon defense in his heart. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's it. There you, uh, oh, oh shit, no. that's it. What? No. That is not it. We would need to wrap up the very important yeah. thing that we mentioned earlier. Then Ed surprises Lorraine with a gazebo. A gazebo. <laughs> sure. Right? Yeah. And then they kiss. Not in the gazebo they just <laughs> got. In the gazebo. Oh, that bothered me so much. It was too. right there. Thank you. Thank you, Heath. <sighs> and we're going to end the movie with, you know, because they always do like a based on a true story. And Ed and Lorraine were on the news and TV all the time. So they have the world's shortest clip of some news guy going, hey, isn't it literally impossible to enforce any law if a guy can just say the devil made me do it? Hard cut end of movie. <laughs> yep. I, yes. thought the, I thought the movie was going to answer its own question no. here. <laughs> no. The movie is like, fuck, that does fuck up our entire movie and system. Mm, <laughs> You'll have to find out society. in The Conjuring 4. <laughs> the end. The end. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke uh, bomb. Cut. Smoke bomb. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's the movie. So important question before we wrap it up. What is the devil going to make you guys do? Any good plans for that? Uh, uh, Heath, I mean, you you see my clients, so I kind of feel like the devil's already won this one. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, and for me, Andrew's still going over the contract. I've got a subsidiary shell soul that we're doing this whole thing <laughs> yeah, through. True. It's very complicated, but I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay. Maybe next week's movie. Fractional soul marketing. Just wait. It's going to be huge. <laughs> I've got a number, Eli. One, two, or three. <laughs> Are you magic? <laughs> you have to tell me. It's like being a cop. <laughs> Wait, it's up to me to say, show me your dick? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for a review of The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found some more bad art on the internet. So, Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath. As you know, one of the best worst series we've covered here on God Awful Movies is the Encounter Movies, wherein Bruce Marciano goes around passive aggressively helping people. So when we learned that the Pure <laughs> Flix original The Encounter TV show had hit the they airwaves, made a show about this guy. Yeah, we had to check it out. So we'll be watching The Encounter, the television show, <laughs> episode one. <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 304 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Andrew for joining us. Anything you want to plug? Anything important you're doing? People could hear more Andrew, more Thomas, maybe. What do you do? Nope. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Modest. And of course, a big thanks. No opening arguments if you don't. It's great. <laughs> oh, this week's episode was so good about the Joe Biden. Gay people think I was wrong about that too. I retweeted it and then I deleted my tweet after I listened to opening arguments. Well, thank you. John Cusack is still wrong about it. So there we go. Yeah, everybody wins. <laughs> I love I love him so much too. Anyway. Uh, high fidelity is so I'm gonna get as famous good. as John Cusack. And I'm gonna retweet your show and you're gonna be like, I love you. Uh, that's true. <laughs> he did. He re he retweeted us out. He doesn't understand the it's tweet, real. but it's fine. You know, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And of course, let's also have a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and then I'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Woo! Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Andrew Torres and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. The adorable little boy, David 
and his other brother who doesn't appear in this movie for reasons you're about to understand when I get to the end of the sentence, literally sued the guy who wrote the book this movie was based on for defamation <laughs> and intentional infliction of emotional distress. And I realize that's more <laughs> sideways than future for the Animal House Close, but I felt like you needed to know that. Works. Important stuff to know, <laughs> yes. Bruno's family is working on some really fun manslaughter ideas of their own. <laughs> Ed and Lorraine Warren went on to set up a three-shell game in Conjuring 4, The P is Haunted, or something. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.